significant day. It marks the signing of an agreement which will enable the first return of recovered stolen money from the UK to Nigeria since we signed our MOU in 2016. So both from a professional and a personal perspective, I'm so pleased to see this money returning to where it belongs. The UK has been working really closely with the federal government of Nigeria to return this money, and I'm so pleased that this money will help to fund three infrastructure projects which will directly benefit the citizens of Nigeria. So the first is the Lagos to Ibadan Expressway, the second is the Abuja to Kano Road, and the third is the Niger Bridge. So we welcome very strongly the measures that the Federal Government of Nigeria has put in place also to monitor these funds um, with support from an organisation called the Clean Foundation. It's very important that civil society can report back to the citizens of Nigeria and to show that these illicit funds that are now returned are being used effectively. So how much is at stake? Well, this first trash of mon tranche of money is £4.2 million. Pounds. And this has been recovered from the friends and family of a certain former governor of Delta State, known to all, Mr. James Ibori. He was trusted by the people of Delta State to be their governor for two terms. Sadly, he did not deliver on his mandate. He stole money, money that should have been used for roads, for hospitals, and for other developmental purposes. So the federal government of Nigeria's anti-graft agencies have been working very hard with us to investigate James Abori, and he was eventually located and faced a criminal trial in the UK. He pleaded guilty in a UK court, and he was given a prison sentence of 13 years. So these funds that we have secured the return of so far are from the friends and family of James Ibori. The case against James Ibori in terms of the amount to be returned directly from him is still ongoing. But the success of this case, and it is a breakthrough because these cases are extremely complex, is down to really effective mutual cooperation between UK and Nigeria. If we hadn't been able to work with partners, we would not be in this position today. So I'm very proud of this case, um, and this is a the small sort of scratching of the surface because, of course, corruption and illicit finance is not just a problem in Nigeria, it's a problem globally. So let me just say a word to put this into the global context. Illicit finance and corruption impacts on delivery of the Sustainable Development Goals. It undermines rule of law, it hinders good governance, and can often have enormous environmental disbenefits. It's, of course, central to organised crime, it's fundamental to keeping people in power who should not be in power, people who are not acting in the interests of the people, and it tilts countries into conflict and instability. And indeed, it puts at risk the whole stability of the international rules-based system. And in a global economy like the one we live in now, money flows very easily across borders. And the only way we can tackle these problems of illicit finance is if we work together based on the good practice that we've established here in Nigeria. So I hope that reassures you that for the UK, this is a central, very important priority. Indeed, it's something we'll be talking about during our G7 presidency that is now underway. We want to make clear that money attained through criminality, through theft, is not welcome in the UK. And we will use the full weight of our in law enforcement to crack down on those who think they have found a safe haven. Don't send it to the UK. But of course, we want to ensure there are no safe havens, hence why it is important to cooperate globally on this issue. So we are fully committed to returning and recovering corruptly obtained assets. But this must be done with due legal process, and I know it's frustrating, I'm frustrated, the time it takes, but it's important that we follow 
the due process and the law so that the funds can actually be brought back and legally returned to the benefit of the people of Nigeria. So in closing, I want to take the opportunity again to, to say a huge thank you to our partners in the federal government of Nigeria. And as High Commissioner, for my remaining two years in post, I will continue to make this a huge priority for me. Thank you very much for listening this morning. The British, the Solicitor General of the Federation and Permanent Secretary, Mr. Andrew Clowes, Mr. Sam Waldron. Today, being the ninth day of March 2021, we are at the threshold of another major milestone in our determined quest as a nation to attain full recovery of all looted assets, prevent a use of recovered assets, and also to ensure optimal utilization of such recovered assets for the benefit of our deserving citizens. I wish to remark that today's ceremony and the, recovered, and the recoveries attached thereto has again underscored the fact that the international cooperation and mutual trust can yield great benefits for the students for, for the citizenry in developing countries who are the direct victims of acts of corruption. Hence, the government of Nigeria and the United Kingdom have concluded negotiations for the return of 4 million, 4.2 million pounds to Nigeria pursuant to the Memorandum of Understanding earlier executed by the two governments in 2016. It is to be recalled that the Nigerian government had all along provided the required mutual assistance and backup to the British authorities while the prosecution of James Ibori lasted in London. And today, we are rightfully taking benefit of that cooperation. I cannot but observe that what we are witnessing today is a glaring manifestation of the age-long national ties between the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the United Kingdom. I am confident that both the Nigerian and British governments remain committed to all affirmative actions to combat corruption, illicit financial flows, ensure that looters do not find comfort or safe heaven in our territories and also to guarantee that the forfeited or recovered proceeds of corruption are deployed to the benefit of the people. Hence, in consonance with the existing framework or model engaged in the management of previous recoveries, the Federal Executive Council, under the able leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari, has directed that the instant repatriated funds should be deployed towards the completion of the following legacy projects. One, the second Niger Bridge. Two, Abuja to Kano Expressway. And three, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway under the coordination of the Nigeria Social Investment Authority to ensure integrity of the process while a refutable civil society organization has also been engaged to monitor, supervise the expenditure of the recovered funds on the, exec on the execution of these critical projects, which are evenly spread across the country. We have, we have established, as a government, a reputation of transparency and accountability of utilization of recovered assets as and these assets will certainly not in any way be different. I am highly elated and privileged to perform this assignment on behalf of the President and the Nigerian and Nigerians in general. I commend the sincerity of purpose of the British government as we look forward to similar assistance and cooperation.